Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the video, I always just said I was gonna make a video about Tess and them. I mean, it's crazy thing. Like Tess and them, eight and four. How's it right now? I mean, they beat Bama though. I mean, being Bama saved their season. Honestly, like they didn't beat Bama. They was gonna, they was gonna be eight and five. You know, it, that's horrible. You know, definitely with the, LA, the SEC being, you know, SEC teams, you know. Like LSU in Florida, not being as good. But, I mean, don't look, I got pain on my hand, that's pain. You know, I'm gonna be in here, don't worry. That's pain for real. But yeah, it's like they eight and four losses to Ole Miss. I mean, bad losses too. It wasn't like just, oh man. I mean, like LSU game, they was beating them 17 to three at one point. You know, Ole Miss was beating them like 16 to three at one point. Arkansas was beating them like 13 to three at one point, you know. And then uh, old, uh, Mississippi State, you know, they was, you know, beating them like, what, by, I think it was like 16 to six, 16 to six, something like that, 10, I don't know. Can't even remember Mississippi State. But yeah, like most of their games was bad. Most of the games they lost was a bad loss. You know, they was getting dominated. Like Mississippi, I mean, Ole Miss, they had like 333 yards to like they 56 at one point. Like it, Ole Miss was driving down the field on them with it effortless. You know, <laughs> it was horrible. And then uh, they had some bad losses. I mean, but luckily though, like Jimbo, that uh, name, image, and likeness that Texas and them got. And the good old state of Texas and all that, man. Jimbo Fisher, what well, he's selling up there. I mean, man, they, they, they 2022 class is scary. Like, it could be scary, dog. Like, it's scary now, but it's like, what the, the predictions they can get, crystal balls and all that, um, they get, they gonna probably finish first with the first class unless like you know Bama or Georgia make a late push and flip some players, you know, which is I don't it ain't looking like it. Like Georgia taking you know three stars right now, which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, especially like it's hard because some dudes ain't even played, you know, or, or, or recruiting or uh, rankings ain't been updated and all that. Like Carlton Madden Jr. Like I mean Cedar Grove played Appling County, I think. They play Apple County today, you know, uh, Dar Smith, you know. Like, he like a 215th ranked composite player. You know, depending on how good he play, he could be the top 100 player. You know, Carlton Madden Jr., like, he's he's not, he's a three-star. But if Cedar Grove, you know, they go all the way and he balls out, he could be a top 100 player, top 200 player. You know, Christian Miller. He's on Cedar Grove too, you know. Like I said, I think he his composite is like 147. I mean, he could be a top 100 player. So, like I said, it's hard to judge because recruiting rankings ain't updated. I mean, for Georgia, it really don't matter. I mean, because of what we don't get, or what Kirby don't get in recruiting from high school, he gonna get in the transfer portal. This is how it been, you know. And really, Georgia don't really need a first class. I mean, it's love to have it, but sometimes it's good to have all three star players. That works hard and stays with the program. Now you know some four, five star and high four stars. You know they, they don't get the playing time they want. Sometimes you know they they out the first year. You know, but you have three stars that stay for two to three years and grind and work, and then the fourth year, you know they balls out and be ready to play. And those you know. The ones that help help a program out. Like it's good to have five stars and talent, you know, but it's also good to have those three stars that be great depth in practice and all that. And wait their turn, and then the fourth year or fifth year they balls out at the program, you know, and be they go to the NFL, you know, that was good to have. You know, and that's what Georgia got. Uh, you know, like Lad McConkey, three star. Uh Jordan Day, of course Jordan Day was three star here, Stokes and all them. I'm talking about the ones on now, Jordan Davis, Lab McConkey, uh, Dan Jackson. He, he was a walk-on, 
You know, he's starting. I mean, not starting, but dude is like top five in tackles on Georgia roster. You know, so that's that's telling you something. I mean, uh, who are the three stars? I mean, that contributor. Uh, Tremel Walter, uh, he was a three star. You know, but either way, uh, Georgia just keep on. In top classes, I mean, that's probably gonna always have, you know, definitely Kirby Smart, though. I mean, like I say, if Georgia wins the national championship, man, they're gonna be standing by 10 five stars class. It's all to it. You know, they, they don't want, they, like I say, that's the last thing people want Kirby to do is win the national championship. Because obviously, he's been recruiting without a national championship in, in a 40 year drought. You know, what a six year, seven year drought for him, but you know what I'm saying? You know, the Georgia can't win a national championship uh, thing for recruits. If he win one, you know, he could tell the recruit, hey, come play for me, you're going to win that championship. And they'll believe him because he did it. And recently, you know, so the uh, Ted Baptist and them, like, man, like, they could got a chance to sign eighth, like, you know, with the crew ranking. Like, like I said, I don't know what it's going to be at the playoff time, like in January. You know, I don't know what the crew ran, but as of right now, they got a chance to sign like seven to eight five stars. All like, I mean, they already got the number two and number three player in the class, and uh, Evan Stewart, the wide receiver, no more wide receiver. Then Walter Nolan, the number one defensive line player in the class. Then they got uh, Connor Wigman, or uh, Wigman, or whatever the quarterback five star QB. That's three already that signed, and they got a chance with Harold Perkins. Uh, five-star linebacker. Uh, then they got Shamar Stewart, you know, five-star D-lineman, defensive end. Doggone. Uh, I don't know why my mind went blank. Uh, uh, N.A. White, you know, he was uh, top 40 defensive uh, end. Or ES player, whatever you want to call it, outside linebacker. I mean, dude, they got they get a class. You know, they young boy here, you know, Bama, Georgia. You know, wish we went to Georgia, you know, but here what it is. I think it's an uncle, uh, Nick Williams. He's at Tessa and them. You know, I'm like, let's say I watched him personally for a while. You know, I'm like 13 miles from Bama. You know, my, my high school played on every year. But here what it is. Uh, matter of fact, my high school played CJ Washington. Uh, Carol played CJ Washington. Though. They got embarrassed. You know, <laughs> played CJ uh, Cedar Town. They got embarrassed. Dog, it was true. But yeah, I mean, Tessa and them, dog. Like this class right here, 2022 class, might bring them a national championship. Or SEC. I mean, I ain't gonna say national championship. But well, I feel like they're gonna win an SEC championship or make the SEC it made the SEC championship. You know how I feel about Georgia, you know. <laughs> well, they're gonna make the SEC championship with the class. Like when they get juniors, dog, you got Shamar Stewart and N.A. White and Walter Nolan. <laughs> All on the same D line. And they got oh, uh, what's the oh, what's the dude name? They got another D line player. I, I, I I think Malik Celia, yeah, Malik Celia, he a top 50 player. Like, dog, like you got four top 50 players on the D-line. That's crazy, you know? Then you got Harold Perkins. Then a five-star QB who you hope pan out. I mean, dog, like Tess said no. Like Jimbo got the pieces. I mean, he just, Got to keep on recruiting. You know, if they land these players, dog, man, they going to have the first class. Like, it's going to be Texas at them, then probably Belmont, then probably Georgia, then Ohio State, and then maybe LSU finish strong. You know, I don't know. But, man, like, that's going to be scary, dog. The SEC can <laughs> Man, like Tess and Neil, I look when you look at a class on, on 247 Sports composite, I usually look at the players, this is all crystal ball. 
test that and them, you be like, man, like, dude, they can literally have seven five stars, seven to eight five stars. If it all pans out and, and all those players commit, that's crystal ball. It tells that them they could have like 11 players in the top 50. I mean, top 100. Uh, about 13, really 13 players in the top 100, depending on how the, you know, the crew cycle go and who all get ranked, you know, after the football season. But yeah, I was going to make that quick video where I said I was going to make about Tess and them crew. And I finally did it. But uh, hey, Hopefully, the testing them do. You no, know, make the West fun. I mean, they already beat Bumble. But maybe they, I wish, I would love to see Georgia versus Tess and them SC Championship game and mess it up. You know, let's see Georgia. You no, know, I don't want to see, you know, gonna, nobody else, you know, but Georgia and SC Championship. But I would love to see a Georgia versus Florida National Championship, though. I mean, that, that's my dream to see a Georgia versus Florida National Championship. No, that would be fine. Either way, man, you know, go Aggies. You know, go dogs. Of course, go dogs, you know, but I like to see the Aggies do something, you know. But anyway, I'm out. Yes, sir.